In this clip I'll go through uh, some of the idea and the algebra of section 643 estimation in differences. So firstly what we want to consider is this little combination of models. So we have our model for a uh, dependent variable y t and that shall be uh, dependent on an exogenous variable uh, xt, an explanatory variable xt and we have a ut and let's say that ut is autocorrelated. Okay, we have autocorrelated error terms. Error terms. Now a common situation is that you find you estimate a model like 149 and you find strong autocorrelation strong autocorrelation in your estimated error terms, okay, the u hat t's. Okay, so if you find that, then a common recommendation or a common strategy, let's say recommendation, recommendation is to estimate 149, hello Vanya. Okay, that was uh, my daughter trying to help me. Uh, a common recommendation is to estimate 149 in differences. Um, and that means what, what we mean with differences is that instead of yt and xt, we estimate the model in delta yt, so the change in yt and delta xt, okay, the change in the explanatory variables. And we already know that this is a sensible strategy if yt and xt are non-stationary non-stationary because then we said often the changes in yt not always but often and the change in xt may be may be stationary and we know that in a model like 149 we require we require yt and xt to be stationary so this whole sort of strategy is really should be seen in combination with the question are yt and xt stationary. So what I first, so let me, uh, I was a bit too quick, I wanted to define what the differences are, it's possibly obvious anyway but let me just write it down. Uh, delta xt is xt minus xt minus 1. So we can do that and then it makes sense to define these differences because we have time series data. That's what we are talking about here. So, but so there is often a combination of empirical things which we find that we find strong autocorrelation in the error terms, and there may be uncertainty about uh, the stationarity of y t and x t. So the, these two things often come in in combination. We should look at them uh, together. And strong autocorrelation, of course, means that we have a rho coefficient much larger than zero and possibly close to one. Okay, so let us firstly do a little bit algebra. What we're now going to do is we're going to reconstruct a model for delta y t from our model 149 and 150. And then we're going to ask, okay, seeing how this new model relates to 149, we're going to ask the question, when does it make sense? Let me just write that down. Okay, so the question is, when is this a sensible strategy? Okay, so. And uh, what we mean is this one here, okay, estimating 149 in differences. So this is the question, 
we're going to ask. And we know there are two issues we have to look out for autocorrelated error terms and what the consequences are, and stationary or non stationary data and what the consequences of this are. So, firstly, um, from the equation, let's write down a model. Okay? Delta y, a model for delta yt, and we know what delta yt is. It's yt minus uh, yt minus one. But we know yt. We also have our model here. So let's replicate this first. So that's alpha plus beta xt plus ut, and then y t minus 1, well we basically just restate the same model just for time period t minus 1. So we'll say this is minus and then alpha plus beta x t minus 1 plus u t minus 1. Okay, So this is basically just an expression for delta yt using our model in 149. Now, let me go back to black, that's my yellow wasn't very visible. What we can see is that the alpha cancels out, and we have two, type, two terms with beta, beta, and we have one xt and then minus xt minus 1. And then we have ut plus ut minus ut minus 1. And of course, given our definition for delta xt, we know that this guy here is just delta xt plus, and let me just put that into parenthesis, ut minus 1. So that is equation 151 on the lecture slide. So it's pretty obvious that alpha has disappeared. Alpha has disappeared. Okay? That means if you're interested in alpha, in alpha equation 151 is useless. Okay? So that's the first thing uh, to note. Now why has it been recommended? So th this at this stage, uh, so alpha has disappeared but beta is still there. Okay, so beta we may be able to estimate from this regression in differences. So why, what is the potential advantage What's the potential advantage of estimating 151? So, potential advantage. Potential advantage. Now, there were two issues. We pointed out before stationarity of. the recrescent or and or the regressors and the second one was the autocorrelation in error terms in error terms so it could be that delta yt and delta xt may be stationary when yt and xt are not. And that would mean that here our, our dependent variable and our explanatory variable would then be stationary variables, which means all our regression theory for time series analysis would apply to 151 but not to 149. Okay? The second case is where the new error term, uh, let me give the, OK, 
create a new error term here. So the error term in the blue box is not autocorrelated. Okay, so if we if we want to address the second issue in this regression, the fact that we find strong correlation in the error terms. Well, if this is the point we wanted to address, then this is useful if that new error term ut minus ut minus 1 is not autocorrelated. So we're going to look at this new error term now. Okay, so we're going to look at ut minus ut minus 1. We know from 150 we'll do the same trick as we did with the yt. What we have here is really delta ut, right? Okay, this is just the definition of the change. So we know from 150 that ut uh, we assumed was modeled like this plus vt, where that vt, as we said above, vt is an IID random term, so vt has no autocorrelation, okay, that's identically and independently distributed. So that is ut and now minus ut minus 1 and we'll again state the same model just for ut minus oh no actually that's not what we do that's actually not required uh, minus ut minus 1 okay minus ut minus 1 so uh, here we have two terms in ut minus 1 uh, one with row, one with one, so really what we have here is row minus one times ut minus one plus vt. So, is this an IID random term? Okay, this is now the question. Is this independent or IID because if so, then this new error term in equation 151 would not be autocorrelated. Well, you can see here the change in ut, this is a little bit of a model we haven't really looked at, the change in ut as a function of the level in ut minus 1. Okay, It's not really an, an AR model as we, um, as we know it, Okay, but you can see change in ut does it depend on where we were in ut minus 1? Well, IID, we would only find if this guy, so what we need for IID-ness, this guy has to be 0. For IID-ness. Okay, only if that is 0, then what we are left with is this VT, which we know is IID. Okay, now this is going to be 0, only if rho is equal to 1. Okay, now rho equal to 1, this was the case where ut was equal to ut minus 1 plus vt. This is from equation 100, 150. Okay, this was the non-stationary non case for, uh, for ut. Okay, so if ut was non-stationary, because that was the case where rho was equal to 1. Okay, so now we have a conclusion. Okay, so remember the potential advantage of 151 could come from two sources. Firstly, from moving from non-stationary regressions and regressors to stationary regressors, okay? That means if the delta yt and the uh, delta xt were stationary where the yt and the xt were not, or where we eliminated autocorrelation in error terms. Now it turns out that this case, this first case, okay, the first case here, was the case when we had non-stationary regressors and regressant. The second case was the case when we had non-stationary error terms. As it turns out, 
usually usually one and two come together come together i.e. we find non-stationary error terms in equation 149 if yt and xt are non-stationary. So really the strategy which we have just uh, investigated estimating modeling differences is really uh, a sensible strategy uh, if we have non-stationary variables. So what we usually say is estimate a model in differences if yt and xt are non-stationary. Okay, are non-stationary and we should say really and delta yt and delta xt are stationary because that's not always the case sometimes you need what's called the second difference but that's a little bit too subtle from here if you were to use okay if you were to estimate 149 with non-stationary data what would be the consequence beta hat from equation 149 okay how would that be distributed well the answer is we don't know okay we don't even know in particular what the expected value of beta hat is and then we clearly also don't know what the variance of beta hat from 149 would be. So basically that means an estimate beta hat is really useless because we don't know from which distribution it comes. If you do that, we call this a spurious regression model. And we looked at this before in this course uh, and we realized that if we were to use erroneously sort of standard inference procedures we would find the betas to be statistically significant when really they shouldn't. We had the example where we simulated two random walks for y and x and found exactly that. Okay, this is all I wanted to say to this section.